what we, what happened in there was a travesty. Um, we witnessed basically three uh, High Court judges um, leaving the court to deliberate. They were gone for about seven minutes at the most, and then they came back and delivered a a 40-minute um, verdict. It was obviously preordained. It had been cooked up before before they actually did it. And, and what they've done is. Um, uh, the appeal was not upheld and this meant that basically um, Holly has been deemed not to be competent and uh, therefore of course all of her evidence as a witness is brought in, to her own abuse is brought into question and more, more serious than that really is that this travesty in this horrible building has put the whole lot back into the court, court of protection. I said the family court earlier, but it would be court of protection, which of course is a secret court. So what now happens, and we know that Shropshire County Council, what they're going to try and do is drive the wedge between Anne and Holly, and if they get Holly away from her mother and in, into care, and I inverted commas, um, I, I think Holly will disappear. They are so desperate to shut this young woman up that they will do whatever they can. Why do they want to shut her up? Because she has revealed that she was sexually assaulted by people at the top of the establishment. And, yeah. Um, yeah, you can look on the Holly Demands Justice website for all the information on that. Well, yeah, Anne and Holly moved out of Scotland because Scotland was getting dangerous for them because of the pressure and the, and the threats. They moved into Shropshire and what happens is there's collusion from Scotland to Shropshire with social services and basically Anne and Holly are now being hounded. Other mothers have described what, what's happen what happened to them as being hunted by social yeah. services. Yeah. Hunted yeah. for the child. And, and it is absolutely blatant in this case. The aim of the game is to get Holly away from her mother. Then she can be silenced. And then, then the case north of the border is silenced. Yeah. And, and what I said earlier is that the key thing to this is that there is an illusion which is um, perpetrated by the national media and press that paedophiles are simply dirty old men in raincoats. This is absolutely not true. Paedophiles exist at the highest level of society. Judges, senior police officers, senior military people, lords, right? What Holly is talking about has taken the focus of child abuse to these people. They want it shut up pretty quickly, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, this has and, been going and, on for quite a long yeah. time, hasn't it, Brian? Well, you've only got to look at Operation Or, where the American police started to highlight uh, 350, 400 paedophiles at high level, and we know names included judges, police people, media people, and what happened, uh, a gagging order was put on it for, I can't remember, 70 years. I think. So what is it about our politicians every time the evidence emerges of child abusers working at their level there's a massive media blackout and, and today the fact that the BBC of course has not been Nobody here, here apart from we've us. seen no, no, no major TV channels Sky was here but they're only interested in one of the other cases why is there no media coverage because the media are controlled by people protecting paedophiles. So do you think that um, if they move to a different county, it would, it would, it would stop the proceedings? No, now? absolutely not. I mean, the UK column offices are, are getting three, four, five calls a week from families talking about their children being taken from them, stolen by the state, perjury, falsified court papers, lies, threats and intimidation by some members of the police. This is happening countrywide, uh, across the UK. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you move areas because children's services, social services simply uh, collaborate in order to hunt and track you across the country. If you talk to parents, parents who've never met each other, they tell you their story. It's a template of what's happening. And now we know that children are being trafficked and moved outside the UK. 
We know this for a fact. There's a lady here, Sheena, somewhere around, who's proven that Kent County Council spent over £100,000 moving children outside UK. It's child trafficking. Yep. Sarah Tether, the Minister for Families and Children, Liberal Democrat, so one of Clegg's uh, cohorts, we asked her what her responsibility meant when it says on her list of, of uh, responsibilities the marketing and commissioning of children's services. Now that to me says something commercial is happening around children. So we said, what are your responsibilities? Not only has she not answered the question, she won't answer freedom of information questions. Why not? Because the British government is stealing, abusing and trafficking children. Well, it, it's like public servants have no liability anymore. They don't put their names on any documents, like the document today, which yeah. is printed on the website. Yeah. It just says policy officer underneath it. Yeah. It's got an email at the top, but yeah. that could be just the person who sent it. So n none of them are... It's, it's hard to make them liable for anything. This is deliberate. It's been done deliberately. And the other thing is that you are finding uh, civil servants and uh, local authority officers, instead of using their minds and their brains, they work to templates. They do everything by a template and that is how they are being controlled. But if we, if we end on a positive note, people say, what do we want to do about this? We have to motivate and inform millions of people, not, not hundreds of thousands. We've got to make the British electorate wake up to the fact they're being attacked and we've got to show them who's attacking them. And it's personal. We've got to name the politicians who are betraying us and in my opinion, we're not dealing with a few expense fiddlers in Parliament. We are dealing with... That's a diversion to what's really going on. Oh, absolutely. They were set up yeah. to... Chris Hewn and his speeding ticket. Yeah. But what, it, what we've really got are politicians who, if they're not involved in child abuse themselves, condone it by the fact that they will not take action. And with Anne and Holly Gregg, even though every MP in Parliament has been informed about it, to my knowledge to date there is only one MP who has, who has said he is going to help and he's particularly interested in helping Robert Green, a man in prison for simply trying to expose child abuse, um, but John Hemming is the sole MP who has said he will help. The rest of them, by turning a blind eye, clearly condone the abuse of children. You know, obvious that what's happened with with them um, with Robert Green is just to get him out of the way. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it was a breach of the peace charge for giving out leaflets because he wanted to be an MP for well, Aberdeen, wasn't it? Well, let's get the facts. Yeah. He wasn't actually giving out leaflets. What he was doing was walking along the road when he was arrested. Yeah. The interdict, which was used subsequently to imprison him, had not been served on him. So when Robert Green was arrested, there was no document in place, no document served on him. So he was clearly arrested and he, he was then subjected to very onerous bail conditions. And now finally he's been given a year's prison sentence. Meanwhile, two weeks before in Scotland, a man who had 50,000 pornographic images of children was given community s service. Wow. What is Robert Green's crime? He has tried to expose the abuse, sexual abuse, rape and sexual abuse of a Down Syndrome's girl. What happens to him, he's put in prison. Yeah. And he's still in prison at the moment. Now we need to make the campaign for Anne and Holly and Robert Green huge. It's got to be huge. That's one thing, that's a positive thing. The other thing we've got to do, in my opinion, is we absolutely have to name and shame the people responsible. We don't talk about Conservatives or Labour. We talk about David Cameron condones the abuse of children because he's done nothing. Miliband is uh, the same. And Clegg. Yeah. And Clegg has got a big foot in the camp because... Um, uh, as I've just said to you, it's uh, Sarah Tether, who is the minister who is now covering up the trafficking of children through this system. Well, you've been incredibly brave um, in what you've been coming out with over the past couple of years. We followed you from the start, um, and you've had an enormous impact. Whistleblowers are coming out the woodwork 
in a way we've never seen before. The police are talking to us, people in child services. I wouldn't say this if it wasn't true. Uh, I had a call from a policeman 30 years, he's recently left the police force and he called me two days ago and he's tracking it and he's talking to his colleagues. But is it just the police who have left and have got their pensions that are coming out? Um, no, it's serving officers as well, but some of them have got to be very, uh, very careful. But I can tell you that before Christmas, I was in a committee room in Westminster where a retired lady police officer told the assembled company, including two MPs, that um, in her time, which is going back about 10 years, she was commissioned to do a survey of all the police districts in uh, uh, UK in order to establish the scale and nature of child abuse to see whether it really was spread out across Britain. Her conclusion with her colleague was absolutely, she produced a report and in Westminster, in the committee room, in front of MPs, she was asked what happened to the report. That's support for us, I hope. <laughs> in the committee room, she was asked what happened to her report on child abuse, and she said it was put in my senior officer's safe and it never saw the light of day. And what is interesting about the police officers who are now talking, many of them have been involved in the, um, in the investigation of child prostitution, child trafficking, child abuse, and they are all coming out with the same story. They investigate, they know what the rings are, they know there are people at high positions of power, judges involved, and then the moment they attempt to stamp it out, their bosses close the cases down. So what we are seeing is that the paedophiles are in the very public services who are supposed to be protecting us. It's you, that simple. Can you see a time when the dam will burst and it will all come out? Or? I, I believe things are moving so quickly that something is going to happen in 12 months. In my opinion, it's, that, it's coming that quickly. But nobody can be complacent. If we want to stop this, you're doing a great job here, get it on the internet, talk to people. And a lot of people say to me, you, you talk to people and they won't listen. The rule is if they don't respond in five minutes, don't waste your time, move on to the next person. Absolutely, yeah? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Those with their heads in the sand will remain with their heads in the sand. Yeah, but I, I think when it, it's, it's the old story, you know, nothing's happening and then suddenly it's going, yeah. it's starting, yeah. it's starting. Well, thanks for your yeah. great work, Brian. I've got right. a really long drive home. So. Make sure we know at the end, people, Robert Green, look up Robert Green and Anne and Holly, yeah. it's justice, and make sure you get on that website and... Uh, and of uh, course, cpexposed.com. cpexposed.com and, and UK column. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.